Artificial stone is a cast material which looks just like sculpted natural stone. Since the early 18th century, manufacturers have cast stone in molds, producing beautiful garden and landscape ornaments, as well as architectural components designed to enhance buildings. Classical style statues and other garden ornaments came into fashion in England in the 1700s. It was trendy for the upper classes to tour Italy and admire Roman art and architecture. Not every noble was wealthy enough to haul home a solid stone antiquity by stagecoach, so English factories began producing facsimiles in artificial stone. The production process today is much like it was then, beginning in the studio, where a sculptor makes a plaster model of the ornament. This one's a copy of an antique bust of Pan, the Greek mythological figure. They use this intricately detailed model to make the production mold. After coating the plaster with a sealer, they cover the entire model with thin strips of clay, making certain divisions between strips to create the production mold's various sections. Over the clay, they apply six or so layers of fiberglass cloth saturated with resin. The resin cures, producing an 8 to 10 millimeter thick multi-section case around the clay-covered model. Next, they open the case and remove the clay, which leaves a gap around the model. They close the case and fill that gap with their specially developed rubber. When the rubber cures, they open the case and remove the model, revealing a rubber mold which bears all the model's intricate details. They send this cased mold off to the production facility and put the model in storage until the rubber mold wears out and it's time to pour a new one. The artificial stone is a natural-looking off-white color. It's made of fine sand, white cement and limestone, plus plasticizers, waterproofers and a few secret ingredients. The factory adds stone pigments into the mix to produce terracotta and other colors. A computer-controlled system feeds the ingredients into the mixer in all the right proportions, then adds a small amount of water to activate the cement, which binds everything together. On the production floor, a caster repeatedly shovels a bit of stone mixture into the fiberglass-encased rubber mold, then, using both hand and pneumatic tools, compacts it in the mold. The quality of the ornament depends greatly on the caster's technique. The trick is to ram enough stone mixture into every nook and cranny of the mold, but not compact too much at a time, as this would produce unattractive layers in the finished ornament. They trowel the open side of the mold by hand and smooth the surface. The stone mix takes 24 hours to reach an initial set. Then, section by section, they unbolt the case and peel off the rubber mold. This may be artificial stone, but its surface texture closely resembles carved limestone. The final step is vapor curing. The ornaments go into a chamber overnight. The steam forces moisture into the pores, curing the cement inside. This type of artificial stone is called dry cast limestone. Other ornaments are made of wet cast limestone, a mix of similar ingredients, but in larger particle size and containing much more water. Because you can embed stainless steel reinforcement bars in it, wet cast is the better material for making objects such as garden benches or large fountain bowls, which require structural strength. Wet cast doesn't have to be vapor cured because of its high water content. However, unlike dry cast, which is finished when it comes out of the mold, wet cast does require finishing. Workers have to grind away excess material, which sometimes seeps out of the joints in the mold and hardens. The wet cast surface is smooth and sealed, so it's normally easier to clean. Dry cast stone, by contrast, has a textured surface and weathers to an antique look. <laughs>